The Garden Party is a short story by Catherine Mansfield. It is from a third-person focalized narrator with elements of shifting narrative and modernism. The Garden Party by Catherine Mansfield is a short story that offers a glimpse into the world of the early 20th century, reflecting the transition from the Victorian era to the Edwardian era. The impact of World War I, the divisions of social class, the traditional expectations for women, and the fear of diseases. During this period, people were moving away from the strict rules and manners of the Victorian era. This new era was known as the Edwardian era, and it represented a transition and change from old ways to new. World War I had a profound impact on society. It caused immense suffering and changed people's perspectives on life and death. During the early 20th century, there were clear social divisions between the upper class, like the Sheridans, and the working class people who set up for the Garden Party. Laura Sheridan, the protagonist, is a young woman expected to follow societal norms for women during that time. During this period, there were serious concerns about diseases like tuberculosis. This fear of diseases and contagion influenced public health concerns, how people interacted and lived their lives. The Garden Party delves into the stark contrast between social classes and how these distinctions can seem quite irrational and unfair. The Garden Party serves as a symbol of privilege and extravagance, highlighting the stark gap between the Sheridan family and the Scots, their less fortunate neighbors. Mrs. Sheridan believes it's her family's duty to host the event while seemingly remaining oblivious to the suffering and hardship of their neighbors, the Scots, thus displaying a lack of empathy towards the less fortunate. Laura initially suggests canceling the garden party out of respect for their neighbor's tragedy, demonstrating empathy and a desire to bridge the class gap, but her mother, Mrs. Sheridan, dismisses this idea, highlighting the family's detachment from the Scots' reality. Laura is taken aback by the poverty and distress she witnesses in the Scots' humble cottage. When she enters the Scots' home, she feels awkward and out of place, emphasizing the absurdity of class distinctions. Her clothing and manners set her apart from the Scots, making her wish she could wrap a shawl around her to cover her fancy dress and to assimilate in that afflicting environment. Her unease reflects the discomfort that can arise when confronting class distinctions. She becomes more conscious of the inequalities and absurdities of her own social class. Mansfield criticizes the gap between the rich upper class and the workers who make their leisure possible. The Sheridans are clearly part of the privileged class, with servants and workers doing all the hard work. They take credit for the party's success without doing much of the actual work. The guests praise them, while the real contributors, the servants and workers, get no acknowledgement. They are also uncaring to Mr. Scott's death, viewing it as ordinary and not showing much sympathy for working people. Laura's father and the servants understand the challenges faced by workers, but Laura, influenced by her family, sees Scott's death as the natural course, highlighting how hypocrisy and social facades trump empathy and compassion. The story echoes the superficial social structure where the poor suffer and the wealthy think they are better, supporting the lack of care for human life that continues the system of labor. Mansfield's story serves as a poignant reminder of the need for empathy and a more equitable society. In The Garden Party, the appreciation of beauty, both in the natural world and in human creations, is depicted. The garden serves as a place of natural beauty and aesthetic pleasure. It is perhaps symbolic of the Garden of Eden with the description that the green bushes bowed down as though they had been visited by archangels. The marquee is set up for the garden party. It is not just a practical structure, it is a work of art designed to enhance the aesthetics of the party. Laura wears a beautiful new hat to the garden party. This hat represents not only her personal aesthetic taste but also the societal emphasis on appearances and beauty. The visually appealing hat is a symbol of how people in that time cared deeply about looking good and making a fashion statement. Laura goes to the cottage of the Scots, the working-class neighbors, after the tragic event. The cottage is small and simple compared to the grandeur of the Sheridan's home and the garden. The cruel contrast between the two settings emphasizes the unpleasant differences in splendor and social refinement standards between social classes. Thus, beauty and aesthetics become tools used by the elites to distance themselves from the pain of others who are not financially cushioned as them. The upper class becomes so focused on maintaining appearances that they seem unconnected with others. The Sheridans take great care to make their garden to boast their social image. The garden party itself is all about surface details, and the guests' happiness seems more performative than experiencing real feelings. Such as Kitty Maitland cares more about the band's looks than its music. 
When Morris sees Mr. Scott's body, she's struck by how beautiful it is, rather than the fact that he's dead, or the emotional aspects of sorrow and grief. The story suggests that the appeal of beauty makes people detached to the reality of death and suffering around them, just as, Jose's song is overlooked in terms of its dark theme of death. The Garden Party is a story about Laura experiencing coming-of-age maturity from innocence and naivety. She has mixed emotions about her family and is becoming increasingly dissatisfied with her sheltered upbringing. Mrs. Sheridan, her mother, employs a subtle and manipulative approach to maintain control while making it seem like she's giving her children independence. She cleverly makes it appear as if the garden party was their idea while secretly orchestrating the entire event. Mrs. Sheridan uses leading questions to subtly guide her children, making them think their choices are their own. Even though Laura initially wants to help the Scots, it's her mother's idea to send her with leftover food. Laura imitates her mother when interacting with adults, mimicking her voice and gestures. Her response to wearing her mother's hat and her fascination with the canna lilies suggests a growing awareness of her womanhood. Despite this, Laura's curiosity drives her to think autonomously and explore beyond her family's confined world. Death and mortality serve as a catalyst for personal growth and reflection in the garden party. The symbolism of Mr. Scott's accidental death from a horse-riding incident lies in its abruptness and the shock it brings to the sheltered world of the Sheridans. It introduces the theme of mortality and serves as a blunt reminder that death is an unpredictable and inevitable part of life. Laura is absorbed in the preparations for the Grand Garden Party, seemingly detached from the harsh realities of life and death, but... When she learns about Mr. Scott's tragic end, she experiences a profound transformation, questioning of the party's appropriateness in the face of the neighbor's death. Laura's encounter with the Scott's grieving family and their modest living conditions is a blatant contrast to the luxurious world of the Sheridans. The garden party itself can be seen as a microcosm of life and death. While the partygoers are engrossed in their festivities, they remain oblivious to the wider world and the Scott's tragedy. The disparity between the frivolous party and the somber reality of death emphasizes the theme of mortality and accentuates the absurdity of class distinctions.